How do you feel about the influence that, that art has on, on people? Well, it's awesome, you know, every kid, normally little naughty kids, right? I was a little naughty kid, and what got me not going down that path was sports and a dream to get into the films. So I was quite passionate about that. And I got into the kickboxing later on in life, become the Welsh and British kickboxing champion. And it opened up the doorway for another dream to get into the films. And that gave me, uh, it put me in a position that I can help and be very positive for the kids. So any kids watching out there, I've never seen so many cameras pointing at me in my life. Listen, follow your dreams, man. And if you're knocking about some other kids and you feel a bit uncomfortable, if you've been a bit naughty, then move away from that, because you don't have to be in that gang, right? Move away and get into something you really like, right? And if they call your name, so what? It's only names, isn't it? You know what I mean? My uncle, he died really young. He was 39 years old, and he was really talented. Um, but you could never get him to say he was talented out loud. He would never say it. Um, you know, we just forced him to draw, yeah. you know? Um, and so he died talented and really insecure. Um, do you have any advice or any words for maybe uh, any creatives or young people that maybe haven't heard their voice yet? Um, when I was a kid, we didn't have really have internet, right? And the internet is the world stage, right? So don't be afraid of locking yourself in a bedroom for a few hours and just sing your heart out and do whatever passionate you're, you're good at, even, you know, flying a little remote control plane or on a skateboard. Do anything that you're, you're good at. You can't be good at everything. Well, you may be, but concentrate on one thing and get really, really good at that and, and just record it, put it on the net, even if you've got one or ten viewers. Because, you know, there's kids out there that become multi-millionaires, but very famous and stuff like that. And it's not just about the money, it's about being very passionate and sharing your, your talent and your dreams with other people, all kids as well, that may look up to you one day. You know what I mean? So just stick at it and go for it. Do you have any, um, maybe any insecurities that may have, that you, that you don't really mind sharing, um, that, that may have hindered your success? Yes. Um, um, when I when I landed my first audition, right, it was for Snatch, right, uh, to play Tommy. But at the time, I was only 32, right, I'm 45 now, but I couldn't read or write. And it wasn't long ago, I'm a heavy dyslexic now, but it, it, it hindered me. You know, sometimes I'd shake going into the bank filling a form in. Sometimes I couldn't even fill my own name in, right? But don't worry about it, right? It just means you're very special if you've got dyslexia, right? You've got to learn a different way to learn things. You know what I mean? Make draw pictures to words and things like that. And just stick at it and stick at it and stick at it. And if you've got it in school, don't worry about it because it's a good time. Don't hide it in and don't mess about. Tell them what your disabilities are and they'll help you. Yeah? Where are you? How far are you in? How oh, far are you? I am, um... I'm at your waist to Spencer Wilder. Okay, cool, cool. So you don't see me here, right? Nope. Go on. Right? Can you see me here? N now I do. No, yeah. can you go, go, go back up. So tell me when you're at, tell me where right you're here. Right here, at your eyes. <laughs> right, cool. And then there, right? All right, Spencer, I want to talk to you. I want to go take you back. You want to take me back to take what? Take you back. Uh, to well, way, way, way back. Way back. Way back. Um, to your earliest form of expression. Um, I want to see everybody. <laughs> I got my arse slapped. That was the first thing. I come out of the darkness into the light and it was one of them. What are the, some, of the, some, some of the first ways uh, you expressed yourself as a, as a human being? My, some of my questions are philosophical. You know, I was, you know, I was one of them kids. I was, you know, while my mates watch football and this, that and the other. I was one of them kids that used to go out, climb a tree, look for animals, bring them back, say it fell out of the tree, but it didn't. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be in mine. Do you know what I mean? Mum used to say, whatever you've brought back here, we don't want it. Put it back in the bushes. Put it back in blah, 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 blah. And once, right, I used to live in Prestatin, right? It's a small town. And uh, there was a bastion gardens field. There used to be a circus that used to come into town. This is, this is the truth, right? And uh, I loved animals, and animals talked to me when I was a kid. You know what I mean? It was one of them. And there was a, there was a big camel, right? And I, uh, they used to be grazed in the daytime, ready for the circus show at night. So I, I went to this camel, and this camel said to me, he goes, I want to come home with you. I went, OK. There was this peg that kept this big camel grazing so they didn't run off, right, and cause havoc in town. Because we don't, we don't normally get many camels walking around North Wales. So anyway, I got halfway home with the camel, and they all came running out and said, 
what are you doing, what are you doing? So I, I wanted to take the camel home with me, and he was, he, I got him halfway home. But anyway, and I used to be one of them kids that used to go and knock on the next door neighbours for, for, uh, for a jam butty and things like that. I was a naughty little rogue, but uh, a cheeky one that got dimples and got away with it, you know? I was one of those kids. In my last interview with you, with you, you mentioned um, that it took you a while to learn how to like read or write, um, yeah. and that was a big part of your life. Like, you know, um, you know, I, I, to me that's like real deep. You know what I mean? Because for somebody that really enjoys uh, expressing themselves and uh, enjoy entertaining people, um, you know, for you, you know, t to to learn that later on in life, like how how are you reflecting on um, with my dyslexia? It with the dyslexia, yeah. Like you said on our last interview. Through high, through primary school, right? I was in Uskell Meyer, uh, uh, like a Catholic school in Rill, right, North Wales. Uh, I couldn't read or write in primary school. I couldn't read or write in high school. So I took no input in. Yeah, I was the class clown. They didn't understand about dyslexia back then. They understand about it now, but there's, I bet there's a few schools out there that are supposed to register dyslexia kids, but they probably don't. You know, they just get pushed to the bit, bit of a hard work, push them back, but. Anybody with dyslexia out there, kids, you ain't thick. You're very special. Look what I've achieved. I've done over 40 films. I was the Welsh British kickboxing champion. I'm the patron of anti-bullying back home, right? It's a special thing to have dyslexia. It, it really is. And it just because just we may learn the theory later on down the line, right? And we get more physical this time. But sports is great and it really helps you. But there's tricks that I've learned over these few years. Because at 32 years old, I couldn't, I couldn't read or write, man. You know what I mean? I used to read Thomas the Tank Engine stuff. Bad. But now I'm good. I'm holding it home with the big boys. So don't beat yourself up, right? Don't beat yourself up because it's okay to be dyslexic, right? It's cool to be dyslexic, right? It, when I, I, I had struggled with remembering words, put a picture to it. Right? If you're, you know, car, put a car to it. Colours, put a colour to it. Things like that, it'll help you remember the words better. And read before, 10 minutes before going to bed. It helps a lot. It really does. We're like computers, it's magic. It's magic. You read a story, or if you want to do a bit of acting, and you find, or you want to do some homework, right? Read 10 minutes before to bed, right? Sometimes it doesn't go in in the daytime. It's like, oh, gone. Oh, I can't do it, I'm dyslexic, I'm sick. No, you're not, right? There's ways around it. 10 minutes before you go to bed, get yourself into bed, do your homework 10 minutes before to bed. And in the morning you're like, wow, I remember it. It does something to the memory. It's really, really good. So don't worry about it if you're dyslexic, because I'm dyslexic, Darth Vader's dyslexic. That was the Welsh British kickboxing champion. That was a dream, right? I got there and I call the boxing machine, the boxing ring, my dream machine, because I've lived another dream. I've become an actor, you know? I've done lots of work in the film industry, over 40 shows. And, but I'm very grounded still, you know, I don't, I don't get lost with myself, no way, I'll never do that, I'll stay grounded, you know, take more in when you're grounded and you can be yourself, you know what I mean, because I'll treat the guy that lives in a bin the same as the guy who's directing the film, it's just the way I am, yeah, treat people how you want to be treated yourself, do you know what I mean, and that's why I'm one of them, um, but sitting down watching a film, I, I, it's not like, it's weird if like I'm watching myself playing a pirate in Peter Pan or playing the Frankenstein monster in Victor Frankenstein or playing Darth Vader in Darth Vader. I watch it like you guys watch it. If I'm watching it like myself, then I'm, I haven't done my job, yeah? Because it's a different character. They just use me to become that character. And I love it. It's very special to feel somebody else inside your body. Do you know what I mean? And you turn it on, you just help it, you give it, you know, from the costume and full of latex and stuff like that, then, you know, you've got to turn that latex into your real skin. If you're going to be a, you know, somebody might be watching me now going, I want to be a creature performer, blah, 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 blah. You've got to become that character. You've got to open up the doorway and give it a real heart and spirit. Yeah? It's pretty cool, man. And it's magic. You can do it. You've just got to believe in yourself. Do you know what I mean?